everyone and welcome back. This week I'm finally getting into one of my most requested topics, that of drafting, which I know is an absolutely massive and can honestly be sometimes scary topic. So what I wanted to start with today was usually the first place you start, the body, dealing with how to draft something to fit your main body shape, whether it's a bodice or a jacket. In this case, I'm going to be doing a men's jacket from 1919. And this comes with its own complications because my body is not what they expect to work with. So I'm going to be talking not only about some of the things you can do when you're drafting out patterns and some of the tricks that I employ and some of the mistakes that you commonly find and how to uh, adjust and manage for those, but also how I am adjusting my measurements to work with this style of drafting that is not expecting me. So there are going to be a few different topics going on here, but in general this is going to be a great start to getting to be familiar with how these old drafting manuals work because there are so, so many free ones all over the internet. I'll link some down below that are some of my favorite resources for those, but there's just so many out there. So I want you to not be afraid of them. This should help you get familiar with them. This should help you understand how you can work through the process in different ways. And if you don't want to do drafting, this can help you understand what's going on with commercial patterns and how the different proportions are decided and sized up and sized down. And will hopefully start to get you to understand your body better and how to adapt patterns or already made garments to fit you. I do have a link down below to the drafting that I used. I highly recommend if you really are trying to understand what's going on to go and print that off or bring it up on a separate screen to kind of follow along. I'll show it a lot, I'll reference it a lot, and I'm gonna put all the instructions up on the top of the screen as I'm going along so you know exactly what step I'm on for each part, but it can kind of help to have that visual next to you through the whole thing. And if you're just here to enjoy watching the process of something like this get created from nothing, that is also wonderful. And I hope you guys learn a lot and enjoy. The very first step that you need to do before you get into any of this mess is to take your measurements. And you'll see different terminology when it comes to different books and to different magazines. There are some things that are fairly universal and common in measurements, however, and so sometimes you can sort of problem solve your way through these. This one did throw me for a little bit of a loop, however. Start with natural waist length, which that is just measuring out the nape of the back of your neck down to your waist. How far is that distance? And then seat length is your hip. They sometimes refer to it as seat. And so that is the distance from the top of the back to the hip. And then full length is how long do you want that jacket? And that varies stylistically. So often I will use the number that they give me as a reference point. If say my seat length is two inches shorter, which it is in this case, I'm going to know that that full length is probably going to also need to be about two inches shorter for me because that seems proportional. This might vary depending on a lot of different things, but that's how I get an idea of what's fashionable right now, or I guess right then. <laughs> These next two though threw me for a bit of a loop because they aren't measurements that I typically see. Upper shoulder and lower shoulder. Now. On top of the fact that I didn't know those terminologies and a little bit of Googling didn't get me anywhere, these are not numbers that I'm used to seeing. 25 and 25 and a half are not typical numbers. What I ended up figuring out after I went through and looked at where it was referencing on the image and how different places in my body might get close in that measurement was that the upper shoulder was essentially measuring from the nape of the neck to that little front point that kind of is where the underarm sits and the front of the arm sits. You could actually use a tailor's square or rulers to figure out exactly where that point is if you're not familiar with it. And that got me that when I measured from that point up around my neck to the other side. I'm used to seeing that in its half measure. So I know that that's 25 on me. And for the lower shoulder, I had to again, go back and look at the drawing and figure out where it was being used, which was just across here on the back section around at the side. So that is essentially that measurement from that point to the other side. So it's measuring that section that is the back and the side, which is actually really useful for what we're going to be doing today because the next measurement is the breast, bust or chest. And this is where it's gonna get a little bit complex. 
because I am holding my weight in a different place than they expect me to be. They expect that weight to be somewhat evenly distributed around the body. If it is more held in your back or in your front or in your sides, that's going to vary up the proportions and the measurement. So what I like to do when I am drafting menswear for myself and they're not taking into account any of the way that I'm holding my weight personally, I am going to take two different measurements. The first is the overall. That's how big this garment needs to be to get around my chest. The other one is going to be sort of in between that and my under bust. So I'm going to measure underneath the fullness of my bust, and then I'm going to go up one to four inches with that measurement, depending on my build and how much chest muscle I would think I would carry if I didn't have the extra weight and mass in front. So in my case, I am a 34 under bust, and I'm a 39 bust. So I'm gonna go up a couple inches. Two inches seems fairly safe. 36 gets us to a nice happy number. That is where I have found it to work for me proportionally because that chest measurement isn't just used for the whole way across. It's used to figure out the height, it's used to figure out widths and all sorts of things to do with your back and shoulders. And if I didn't have the chest that I have, that measurement wouldn't be as big as it is. And those proportions to the back need to be based off of not carrying that weight in my front. So that is where I have found it to be comfortable. Two inches is a really good number for that difference, but you might find if you have a slimmer frame to you and you wouldn't bulk up with a lot of muscle there that you only wanna add an inch. Or if you feel like you would still hold weight in that area and you want to account for that and maybe you hold weight around that upper portion just above your underbust, around your back and sides, then you might wanna go up three or even four inches. So. Think about how you're holding your weight, where it's sitting, and if you didn't have that weight in front, what would that measurement be? So I'm going to be using 36 for mine, and we move on to the waist, which is pretty self-explanatory, and to the seat, which like I said in this case is referring to the hip. Now the other thing I like to do is to go in and come up with the half versions of those last three numbers, because they're going to ask you for the half version a lot. And in fact, most of the math that they will have you do is for the half version, because you're only drafting half of that garment. So we do not need the full numbers most of the time. Generally, they'll tell you if you do, they'll reference the full number. Then, to keep my sanity, I will go through and do the math on every single step and put it off to the side before I start. I don't want to be doing that math while I am dealing with this. And it allows me, if I get to parts that are complicated or parts that rely on other measurements to sort of mark those and be like, hey, this is an area that I'm not really sure about. Maybe it will make sense by the time I get there, but just in case. So thankfully this wasn't quite that hard. There were a few things that confused me, but it was mostly to do with those upper shoulder and lower shoulder bits. Once I figured out what they meant, we were good to go. So. Let's get started. We're obviously going to want for our supplies all of that prepared. You'll need a pencil, preferably with a good eraser. I also generally recommend an entire eraser as well. And then you will want your measuring tape, which you've already been using to take your measurements. And then from there, I recommend either a Taylor square or quilting rule, something that allows you to get squares. I am also using this paper and this really makes my job much faster because a lot of this is going to be, as they call it, squaring up and down. You need a lot of straight lines. So I do recommend this sort of paper, but you don't have to have it. If you have a good tailor square or a quilting roll, you can work it out. And then inevitably a yardstick or some sort of other very long straight edge because there will be a few times where you need something that is possibly longer than your quilting roll. If you have a really long quilting roll, you may not need this, but I regularly go up to at least 25 inches, so I find that to be a pretty common thing that I end up reaching for. With all that being said, let's get started. The very first step that you're going to do, no matter what, is going to be to find your origin point, to find usually the letter A. That's always at the very top right 
I have seen it occasionally on the top left, but it's nearly always the top right. So you just wanna make sure that you have enough space upwards for your full length and enough space off to the side as well. So all the way up here, we find our point A. Then we're going to square down and over. Two, three, four, and five look like they're giving us our lengths down the back. And that's generally the place that you start because you're going to need all of these horizontal lines in order to come up with these proportions. So these are the important lines that we're starting with. And they have two from A is three inches more than one fourth upper shoulder. I'm gonna go ahead and do that math, which gets me to about nine and a quarter. The problem is that marking for where the bottom of the arm side and essentially the upper part of the chest is, is frankly, way too low for me. This is something that I actually like to measure on the body. You can wrap a tape around your body just so it's right at that comfortable point under your arm, not too high up and not too low, and then double check that back measurement. For me, I can go down to about eight and a half. After that, we've started to move into a really dropped arm side thing for me and that gets complicated. We don't wanna do that. That's a different style. So I'm going to ignore that nine and a quarter knowing proportionally that I'm probably not as tall as the gentleman that they are used to fitting to. I am about 5'4", and the average man that they reference in a lot of these is 5'8". Not surprisingly, I don't need that length. That length to me is not proportionate to my chest in the same way that it might be. So I'd rather make absolutely sure that this is where I'd like it to be. So like I said, I'm gonna go with eight and a half for that because that's where it measures comfortably on me. And then thankfully the next one for number three, we have the waist length, which we did actually measure. We measured that out as 15. 21 inches for number four and 28 for number five. Now we have a nice starting grid. So we can get to the complicated parts. Six from five is one inch. So five is down here. Number six is right there. So we just have to go over one inch. Number seven is from three. We're dealing with the waist. One and a quarter inches. And this measurement here, both of these measurements in fact, will vary depending on how fitted your garment is in the back. More curved in means it's more fitted to the back. And this is going to be indicative of the style, the era, a whole bunch of things, whether it's more conservative or more fashionable. So this will vary from draft to draft and they will very often tell you what that measurement needs to be because it's based off of fashion, not necessarily you as a person. So connect A to seven and seven to six. We are drawing that back line. So seven to six looks straight. And then it does look like they give some curve to A to seven. Go ahead and draw a straight line as a reference point. So they do say you should shape this. So it looks like it comes in a little bit there and out a little bit there. I don't find this curve to be enough for me to go grab a French curve or do anything particularly technical here, and that creates a nice curve there. And it says to go ahead and put that vent. Unfortunately, we don't know what the style is, but they do give us that little image there. So it looks like it starts just a little below seven and three, comes out straight over, and it looks like it's just beyond that line. So somewhere around there-ish proportionally. And what does that end up being? It ends up being about an inch and a half. Honestly, pretty comfortable with that. So we drew that line, it crossed the number two rest line. So let's go ahead and mark that. And that gives us number eight. So lower shoulder was essentially that measurement that we took around the back to that point. And obviously we're working on the halves, so we need half of that. So I need 12 and a quarter to get to number nine. We've squared up and down. 10 is thereby located on top of the construction line. So we've now drawn that line and it matches up to there, number 10. 
open, and then it has us sweep. So we're keeping 0.9 stable, and we're going to sweep out to get a curve. Sweeping is used when you're triangulating. You're going to have two measurements that need to meet at a point, but you don't know what that point is going to be yet. Next we're seeing 12 from nine, which is all the way up there, is one twelfth breast more than two thirds lower shoulder. Okay, a little bit of math there, but you have to make a decision at this point, whether you're gonna use a smaller or larger number. Because this is dealing with proportions of the shoulders and back and all of that, I would not use that larger number. I would use your temporary number, as it were, the slightly smaller number. So I'm gonna use 36. Doesn't seem to imply that we need to put things in half. Seems to be pretty close proportionally to what I would expect. Looks like that distance is just a little bit shorter than that distance. And that's what I'm seeing there. So proportionally, that makes sense. So let's go ahead and go up here and mark it out. So one quarter, and this is where we're definitely working on halves, one quarter of that smaller one, because this is a proportion that we're dealing with for the side and the back, not that front section, means that we're taking 36 and turning that into 18, taking a quarter of that, and then adding half an inch, so we end up with five. So we need to go five inches over. If you are worried about this measurement for your back width, you can always double check with the measurement that you can take at the back width. And you can apply that here and double check it. So I can look at this and go, all right, what does that end up being? That ends up being seven and a quarter, and it's gonna end up being a little bit smaller up there. So it might end up being about seven right there. So 14 across my back. They are giving me nice proportions. I can always measure it on a jacket that I have as well, just to be extra sure but I'm gonna circle that one just in case I need to come back to that spot as well. So this is going to be giving us the shape that we need for this back neck here. 16 from A is one and three quarters inches more than one twelfth of the breast, which gives me 3.25. Again, make sure that you're using the half. 3.25 is a number that I like. I'm expecting it to be somewhere around three, three and a half. That's really typical for this style. If it's a lot more, you're typically dealing with either a very front forward shoulder seam if it's a lot less, you're dealing with one of those, say, 18th century, really slight back shoulder seams. So this is a really typical range. So around three to three and a half for me is really typical. So this is very much what I would expect. And then you're going to find 17 by squaring up. Just freehand that because it's such a small amount. That gives us 17, which again looks about right. Three quarters of an inch is a pretty typical number to see there, and that looks like about three quarters of an inch. This says 18 from nine is four and a half inches or to suit the run of the shoulder seam. Meaning that this is the angle that you're going for fashionably during this era. And if you need to adjust how it fits on your shoulders, you're more likely to adjust the front angle. The back angle is very much a based on fashion thing. Like, so this is an angle that's really nice. If you're dealing with a very large broad back, you might end up wanting to change that number to be lower. Just continue that line over. If you're more like here, you might want a lower number. If you are really small back, you might want that number to be a little higher. But that's roughly the angle that we're looking for. Since I'm not way off of their measurements, I'm going to go with that four and a half that they recommend. You can definitely do that and see where it gets you. And then connect 17 and 18. thereby locating 19 on the line squared up from 13. So we now have 19. One and a half. So about a quarter inch out from 19. And it looks like we're going to have a slight little curve there. We're just going to dip that down ever so slightly, talking maybe an eighth of an inch there. So we're doing this little portion right here. We're, we're dealing with getting to 20 there, which seems to be just inside the line. So 
So around two and seven eighths. That gives us our halfway point or point 0.21. So one inch back from 13, and we square down from there. That gives us 22. 7 to 22 on the waistline is 5 and 3 quarters. So we have to turn that into 7 and a quarter. We're going to go 7 and a quarter. So essentially what they're having us do up here is usually quarter of an inch out. I don't know why it specifies seams width. That's a very awkward measurement, but usually you come out a quarter of an inch. Doing this to get down to here. This is also a place where you might want to adjust this curve more out or more straight, depending on dealing with your hips. Don't worry about this being something feminine versus masculine looking. It needs to fit more so than anything else. And weirdly, like I said, there are lots of times throughout history where the curvy hip was just as much for men as for women, because it accentuated the trim waist and the flare up to the shoulders. So, this is more of a human condition than a gendered one. 48 doesn't exist, so let's find 24. Here we go, there's 24. One half full breast. Well, I'm gonna guess that they meant eight because that would be a measurement that really makes sense. And this is where we do want to use that larger measurement because now we're starting to incorporate to that front point. The, all of this over here is going to be the overlap and other things, so the ease and all that. So this needs to be your full chest measure that is taken in half. And then we're gonna get to 25 from 24. This distance here is in this case, three inches. We're figuring that when the garment is finished, the front edges will overlap each other about half an inch. So what it's saying is that it's accounting for a half inch overlap and that inevitably there's going to be some ease built in as well. I trust them on this three inches because that is a fashionable thing. And we can always double check that measurement later once we have the front drawn in. 26 from 10 is half inch more than one six breast. Well, we definitely wanna go with the smaller number for that. So we are coming three and a half inches over, 10 right there to get 26. Now we know what we did that sweep for. So nine to 26 and up all the way to that sweep. So up there we now have 27, eight to 17 gives us just over three and a quarter. We need to apply three and a quarter all the way over here. Back down, which interestingly enough, pretty much is at 26, but. Okay, so we meant to 21 without including that curve. And... That's pretty typical to find that the front is less than the back. They expect you to sort of ease in that back. So our back, is five and three quarters. We need half an inch less, so five and a quarter. What we're seeing here is that sort of bulks up over. We get that curve there, which sort of makes up for the lack of curve there. The convex versus concave. 30 seems to then go down to the 18, and then go past cuts off that corner there, matches up at the bottom though, and then comes up to 20. Seems to have a little bit of a flat right there. So I'm gonna go with the smaller measure because it's a proportional thing. This is 31 there. So the line nine to 27 is that angle. You square forward off of 31. And this is where you really need that quilting rule or Taylor square in order to get that shape there. What they're saying is essentially you're going to shape this out depending on the front lapel and collar and all of that stuff. So honestly, 
don't worry about doing that right now. If you wanna draw this like neckline in there just to kind of visually see what's going on, great. Otherwise, you're going to have to go to a completely different section of the book or find a hopefully completely different section of the article or find a different book and it will talk to you about how to draw out lapels and collars. That is a completely different section. That is a completely different day. I am not going to do that today. <laughs> And that is supposed to be 32 right there. And I'm going to assume it continues 33 is on the seat line. Yep. So this is going to give us a place to start for that front edge. Honestly, I'm gonna go ahead and continue that up because it looks like it does. Continue that the whole way. I do all the rest of the math, two and three quarters inches. So that's a possibility. Or one quarter of an inch less than the amount added on from 24 to 25. Okay. Since I used the measure that they had, yes, two and three quarters is the correct amount. To figure out what this measurement is over here, and that looks to be five and three quarters, but you know what? You don't even need to measure it if you can mark it with your finger right there. We know that that needs to get us to 16 right there and so that marks us out so it's basically saying this needs to be your full waist or half your waist really i think that's also a problem i think that was supposed to be 39 from 33. so let's do that 39 from 33 is three and a half inches da -da -da. and moving it on over right there. So what it's saying is we're going to eventually take this dart in here. This is what they mean by underarm suppression. We call it a dart. They're calling it underarm suppression. So it's saying whatever you take out of these two little darts here needs to add in past 38 over here. And then we will also add in a little bit of ease over 40. It looks like they added somewhere around like half an inch-ish. It looks like they don't give us instructions on where these darts need to go. So let's look at how they did them. I'm gonna draw in about where they should go because this, this little point right here gives me a nice reference because it shows that there's a dart right over here. There's gonna be some sort of fish dart that comes up. It seems to match up somewhere around there-ish. We're just kind of giving a vague idea. So I'm just gonna draw a line about there. It gives us a vague place to start. And this is sometimes where you can look at other drafting manuals and they might give you more instructions, but I'm going to assume that I'm going to probably end up taking out about that there and about that there, looking at the proportions that they did. This might change on the person. That's quarter inch plus three quarters of an inch, so an inch. That's a really very safe number. So I'm going to start a little bit bigger than that because I like, I like the curves in this era, so I'm going to end up probably taking a little more out of those darts than what I've drawn in. But let's throw about an inch and a quarter there. Let's bring this up, it's supposed to match there. This is supposed to then little curve way over. My goodness. As you can see here, that is a lot of curvitude. Um, this might be the place where having to deal with a larger hip to waist ratio than I want is gonna be a problem. So two options here. Either I can shift this back over slightly so that way I take up more hip in this back or I can get rid of some of this waist curve which I think makes sense. This is really curvy comparison to what they're showing there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just reduce the curve right there. I can always nip that back in on my body if I really want to. A little bit smoother curve. That's still pretty far to get over, even at the angle that it's showing. So what I'm gonna do, like I said earlier, is essentially add, in my case, about half an inch there because I can smooth that curve out without it looking too abrupt. And I don't have to put quite that much ease into that section. We're pretty close. There's still a little bit of ease. And I'd rather give myself a little bit more space there than I might end up needing. 
because I might get this on my person and be able to trim that in just a little bit there. So now I've drawn this all the way down and I need to come in and take a measurement of this portion. So that way they end up the same length. around here we go gives us our bottom angle so let's bring that over about like that set buttonhole half an inch up and then this point is three quarters above that so one and a quarter there and then this gets drawn as an angle So at this point, we're getting into that collar, which again, even if it gives you some instructions in this, I will uh, always recommend going and finding instructions for just collars rather than going off of that, because you can see there's a little bit of referencing there, but it's still missing a lot of uh, description in terms of that. So these are all stylistic choices. You can sort of vaguely do that, and then I recommend marking those out on your mock-up and then seeing where they actually look like they should go on your body. I generally like the shape of the upper portion, but I feel like the bottom is a little too short. It's very abrupt. So I might go in and lengthen that out. Thankfully, it doesn't make much of a difference with all of that complication up there. And it might make that hip a little bit easier to fit with that curve. So that might be one of the only major adjustments that I make to this pattern is just lengthening that out in comparison to my measurements. We'll see what the rest of it ends up fitting like later. Since I'm not at the point of making a mock-up of the jacket that I drafted out, I want to show you this jacket compared to my 1921 women's jacket. You can see that the back here of the 1921 is much straighter. It doesn't actually curve in at the back and it doesn't have any darts at the front, hence why there's this sort of little gap at the side and waist here that would be taken up by that back slant and the darts. The shoulders, however, are really similar. The armhole, very similar shape. The width of the back, again, once it's canted over, really similar shape. The angle of the front, carrying all the way down there, really similar. So the fit of this will just be a straighter version of this 1919 men's jacket in reality, but it's very similar in proportions and should have a fairly similar fit up at the shoulders that this one does. Mm -hmm.